y'all. Welcome to another episode of the CP Podcast. I'm your host, CP. And it's the CP Podcast. Uh, not to be confused with any other rendition of CP. My name is Chris Powell. That is my initials. And uh, if you're here for anything else, you're a fucking creep. Uh, to my right, psych. On the screen is Maya. Maya's back. Uh, she is Everybody. joining us uh, virtually. I feel like this is like a real show. It's just like ESPN. Like Maya's joining us from the field. She's out there uh, in Babyland right now telling us what's going on on Babyland. And then uh, Amir is here. Amir has a gray shirt on. I don't know if he got saved this weekend <laughs> or, uh, you know, so I don't know if, 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 if the Lord called Amir to the front of the church. We, we switched. You got all black today. Oh, my God. Oh, did you fucking you did. body switch with me, bro? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Oh shit! Shout out to this uh to this brand PTO paid time off. Uh, they sent me a couple of shirts. They're a dope brand. Um, I'll put the link when the podcast comes or whatever. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, wow, Maya, welcome back. Thank um, you. It's good to be back finally. I know, man. I know, man. I, you know, like um, how's motherhood? It's good, you know. I've always already forgotten about the birth process. I'm just here feeding the baby. Yeah, yeah. Wow, ain't that crazy? It's just, it's just. I think you're wired that way on purpose. I, I think, like, as a man, I probably would still be in a ball, curled up, crying, only eating applesauce, and with a diaper on. You know what I'm saying? Women be like, did that. That's done. Anyway, I got to go down to the market, get some melons because I got to get it. You'd be like, wow, women are dope. You know what I'm saying? So how's baby Roman doing? Oh, he's great. He's sleeping. As long as you feed him, he's fine. If you don't feed him, he'll scream bloody murder and ruin your whole night. Mm. Like He's very healthy lungs. We got to eat. Mm. Oh, very healthy. Oh, man, he could be a singer. He could be a little opera singer. You know, you let him cry, build them lungs up. He could just be in, be in, be in preschool like, and no! Nah! You know what I'm saying? Like, you never know how he could just, you know, like, man, he could be soulful. I, we were talking before the uh, podcast came on, and I was like, man, he, he he a little eater. That's good. He could be a big boy. I said, would you let him play football? You said you let him wrestle, but no Yeah, football. wrestling's okay. And I, and, and I get that. I guess I'll, my question I always ask mothers is, what do you do, though, if he's the best ever? Like, what, like, what do you do if he's the best ever? Like, I think that, I think that a lot of moms, when you ask them about whether or not they want their kid to play football, it's like they immediately think about, oh, my baby, he he might get hit. But what if your your baby is the one that's out there fucking crushing, and you like, all right, like, what do you do then? If if you know you put him in little league, try it out, bam, he kills a kid, and you like, oh shit, he's built for this. Then what? Well, he's still hitting someone. You're still hitting your head. Like if he's going at somebody, hitting him with his head, it's still gonna cause him concussions. I mean, but I'm talking about the scouts. So I've never seen a kid. He's like a little baby JJ Watt. Like he's swimming the line. He's doing sp- He's doing stuff that he didn't even, shouldn't even be doing. It's like, cause you, and you and they're like, ma'am, we want him in college at six years old. Like that's how good he is. <laughs> <laughs> we want him now at Georgia. We're gonna give you the scholarship now to Bama. I'm just saying, like, you know, every mom has had that same thing. My son is not going to play football. And it's like, man, just, you know, my mom didn't let me play football, and she was right. And all I'm saying is, because I didn't grow up to be one of the best ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if I was bigger, though, with the aggression, I would be, you know, I might I might have went to the lead. <laughs> just like, just it's like doing quick moves like that. I almost threw up right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you well, know. high school, you're smaller. And then college, they're smaller than the NFL. And so to even get to the NFL, they got to get through, the, what, eight plus probably 12 years of football mm-hmm. just to get to the NFL. Oh, man, that, that's a lot of risk. I don't know about I that. I mean, but everybody who's in the NFL, that's what they had to do, though. They had to get through the good 12 years of, you know, football. To, and, and, you know, it's not like, I don't know. I don't want to put nothing on Roman. I just... Some reason I just imagine him like a little baby John Snow on the playground, just like, you know, just like piling up the bodies and standing on top of the bodies. You know what I'm saying? You know, long hair. Well, you know, he's little... got a lot of hair. Does he have a lot of hair? He has got a lot of hair. Yeah, it, he came out with a lot of like Goku hair. He came right out. <laughs> and he but did I not tell you though? I said, man, remember you said you was having heartburn. I was like, man, I might be. He might be having a lot of hair. My mom said she had hella heartburn. And I came out looking like a baby Michael Jackson. 
when he was black. You know what I'm saying? With the fro. Just, just look over your eyes, honey. I had that fro. You know what I'm saying? I had the ABC one, two, three fro. I thought you were crazy when you said that. I was like, yeah, CP's on something. But then mm-hmm. I looked it up, and that's actually backed up by science. If yep. you have a lot of heartburn, that's yeah. a sign of yeah. lots of hair. See, I be baby. knowing stuff too, Maya. But I also be on some. <laughs> I definitely be on some shit. But I do be knowing some stuff. I'm not just, you know, jokes. I'm jokes and facts. Exactly. Jacks. Anyway, so what's going on with uh, this thing that we were talking about earlier with the the alligator fighting pigs? Yeah, I have saw, you seen this picture? Let me pull this up. I saw that one. That one right there. That shit made me so happy because fuck them alligators. And look how, I don't know... It, it, and so you said it's fake. It's fake. It's AI. Uh, can I tell you something? It don't feel like AI because of how the light is shining off his belly and the same light is hitting the swamp. Mm. Like, like AI that, is good now. Man. AI is creating lighting? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Here, there's some more. You can see, see, you can see they're fake when you go down here and you see them eating pizza with the alligators. Yeah. Cause ain't no way. First of all, I mean, I guess if the alligator can chomp his mouth, but it's like he can't appreciate no slice like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you know. But then again, the AI thought of everything. Look at the little slices on the side. Cause all he's doing is just he can't chew it good. He can't even you 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 gotta finesse pizza when you chew pizza. He he can't even so he got little chomps on the side, and and this fat nigga with the with these um stretch marks from birth on his stomach, he's laughing. He having a good ass time. Them alligators. It looks like he's trying to body slam that joint in the in the the picture on the right. Nah, he laughing, and and you know what? The alligator laughing too. Now that I look back and look <laughs> at it, somebody said something, and uh, these niggas start rolling. They pizza, they pizza they they cool. And stuff. Like, yeah, hey. they cool. The slice behind him don't even belong there. That's how you know it's fake. Look at the slice behind him. And not, the slice sliding down his belly. That don't, don't look real neither. They're not, that's not how a pizza will fall. Look at look at the picture on the left. And the alligator's on top of the water, right? But this dude's knees, his it's knees inside. are gone. Oh, yeah, his knees is inside. You see. right. And then why the fuck the bottom of the box of the pizza not wet? It should be... It looked like it, they didn't even finish making the bottom of the pizza box. It's yeah, just like it's on top of it's the... It's on top of the ground. Yeah. It's like, dog. Uh, the other then, picture is the, probably the most believable one, though. Yeah, but it's like, also, who delivers to the swamp, too? That's an immediate, like, what What address did y'all give them? Who out there? In who, Florida. Who, who's taking pictures? <laughs> <laughs> what address did y'all give them for that hey, hot, fresh pizza to come like that? Honestly, though, I've never seen anybody kick an alligator, though. And that, that might and be, that's the dog, that shit had me it. hype. I was like, ooh. And, and, and they got the splat, like the water yeah, splash. Yeah, and it's right where you would need to kick it, right up under that mouth, like, bam. And the other alligators, they some hoes. Because they looking like, man, they supposed to, they supposed to attack that other calf muscle and roll. They, they could have been killed him. They let him kick the homeboy. At least, at least his man's had enough balls to jump out the water and try to get the nigga. And he poof, kicked him. Man, I love AI, man. AI ain't missed. AI ain't missed, man. AI has been really a blessing lately. Well, it could have been true. Did you see this story? Philly denies emotional support alligator from entering ballpark. What? Uh, man, what are we doing? What is, so, what's... I mean, it could have been real. This guy tried to go... He tried to go to a Phillies game with this emotional support alligator, and they say he couldn't bring it in. What is the alligator going to do for him emotionally to support him? Like, I, don't I don't know. What does the dog do? Shit, be licking you and shit. Not a lot of animals is going to lick you till you calm down. Why would you want to bring that in there? I think the risk of having an alligator, like, you know, lash out or something is way higher than a dog. Hell yeah. I don't know. Some dogs are Some dogs really, can get wild, really but we can, we can wrangle Maya. up a dog. We try to wrangle up an alligator. So you said, right. I mean, come on now. A dog can sit. You can't even, I mean, both of them. Okay, look, let's look at the pros and cons of both of them. Both of them like treats. Both of them would take a treat. I think we can all agree both of them would take a treat. One of them will lick you. One of them will bite you. Eh, Right? One of them can bark. One of them will bite you. Right? Um, 
one of them can wear clothes. One of them can bite you. <laughs> like, it's not a lot of... All alligators can do is bite. The alligator bite is something serious to me. Because they're going oh, to gonna roll. Is. They're going to do the death roll. They just ripping everything out. So if, if it bites the back of your foot, it's going to start twirling and rip all your Achilles and all of that. It's going to come out. <laughs> Bam. Ooh, now, I did wait. see a guy in Florida run off an alligator with a frying pan. <laughs> Florida is like a lawless land. Wait, you saw a guy in Florida doing what? He ran off the alligator with a frying pan. Oh, I saw that and bink the shit out that alligator. I, man, that video made me feel good. I was like, man, fuck. These reptiles, they think they run shit. Yeah, he boom. The alligator went right back. I'm like, cool. Yeah. Wait, all, here, here we go. That's all I need to know. Look at this. Oh. You know, is that RuPaul doing the news? But she's prettier than RuPaul. What? I'm just saying, she big as hell. There we go. Mm. Yeah, pumped his ass. Bink. But he got to move, though. That shit ain't that's over. A, that's a big alligator. Oh, that's sorry, not, crocodile. That's what I'm saying. That shit that's ain't a, over. He got to move. Crocodiles are worse, right? Yeah, what? They're they bigger, gonna, aren't they? They're going to catch his old ass sleeping one day. He, he gonna, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. It's gonna be a little wet. He gonna slip down them stairs, and them alligators gonna rush his bitch ass. And be like, remember that frying pan? He gotta move. It's time to get out of that neighborhood. Yeah, he probably, he he probably got ain't got into they, 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 they already there in his backyard. Yeah, he done got into it with the local riffraff. They finna fuck him up. In Florida, they got alligators, and crocodiles. Out here, we got bears. They which, had a, which would you rather do? With? Uh, bears. I'm gonna what? Tell you. Bears? Yes. Then an alligator. A a big okay black bear yeah but a brown bear a grizzly bear absolutely not well of I'd course not okay well these aren't these also aren't fifteen foot crocodiles that crocodile that right that's a nine footer we're talking about a black bear the bear that's in California first of all any bear period is gonna have a hibernation period so there's a whole season where you're not even dealing with bears Florida is doing gators three sixty five his niggas getting bit by gators on Christmas <laughs> yeah it's always warm that's true they found a gator. With a dead body, and they I had saw, to put the gator down. I was just about to say that. Yeah, that was like uh, that was like last week, right? They found that they found a gator with a body, and uh, it was just that's crazy. Dog. I mean, we we talked. Then we talk about the. Uh, did we talk about it right here? The, maybe not. The lady got snatched up, or it was like a kid. I know a kid got snatched up before at Disney World. I think. What? Yeah, a kid got yeah, snatched at up the, at like Disney. Everglades. They had went in the water. You're not supposed to go in the water, and I think it was at night, and the kid got snatched by alligator. What? Yeah, it was a few years ago. And I feel like recently there was a old, yeah old lady. I think she was trying to save her dog, and they took her down too. Yeah. How much do you love that dog? People be acting like they love these dogs for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To that motherfucker. Uh, to your dog watching you go down under, making bubbles. Your dog like. Arr! The dog probably tried to fight, but it gets snatched too. Man, I've seen plenty of dogs get snatched, and it used to be funny. Now it's just a little funny. Yeah, I, I don't know. But well, speaking of bears, y'all saw that video of the bear eating that food. No oh table. yeah. Show me, show me, show the me. The mother's show just me. Uh, hiding the face. Yeah, the, the bear was on the picnic table, bro. Oh my god, I got something I want to talk to y'all about, but because it's right in pace with this animal thing. Okay. And I posted this. Uh, so after this, I'm gonna show y'all another video. Another video. And then I did a deep dive, and I wanted to know what y'all think. I'm glad you're back for this, Maya, because this is like a good thing to talk to you about. But pull okay. up the berry first. Okay, so here we are. Let's play this. Man, these headphones making me look crazy. Hold on. You see him? Oh, yeah, I did it's see this video. Bear. Why would they not move? They probably don't want to startle it. I probably wouldn't move. That's not even a it. big bear, low key. It's the baby. That's the, that is probably the baby, which makes it scary. Man, why would why cause you you, you feel like like mom mama is, nearby? Mom is always not too far away from the kids, usually. Man, see, I gotta watch my temper, bro, because I'm I'm thinking about socking the bear. Uh uh. Man, you know, next thing you know, it's a whole gang of them coming at you. And that's you cool. You're not you're not faster than a bear. No, nah, but I, I'm gonna sock him and get to the car. Bing, 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 real quick. Arr, arr. The mama come, I'm in the whip. Driving. Fuck that. Because that's all hell of people talk about, man. I'll 
I'll be I'll be beating this bare ass. I was like, I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't risk it personally. He chilling. He if it's a black bear, it's whatever. I, I still wouldn't be like <sighs> All right. I still wouldn't be inclined to punch it though. So peep this, Amir, look up uh there was a video of a parrot using an iPad. I put it on my Instagram, right? But it was a video of a parrot using an iPad to to log into YouTube and find videos about parrots. And it was scrolling through its favorite ones, clicking them and watching them. Now this, this fucked me up because it made me ask, ask this question that I want to ask, but let's, let's, let's bring up the parrot first. Amir, you have it? Yeah, I'm trying to find uh which one. You said it was on, was it on YouTube or something? Or was it uh hey, yeah, I wait, think we, we we should be able to find it on YouTube. Uh, was it this one? It wasn't this one, but it will it wasn't this uh oh, that's funny because that was the one I literally just put up. It wasn't that one that it wasn't from this angle, but it but this is literally it's the same thing basically. Watch this. She, she goes off the video, parrot goes back, finds a parrot video. This is what it wants to watch. Now, that's crazy. And it X'd out of the other video, or at least it tried to, and it gets pissed. It, it minimizes that, scrolls up, finds the parrot video that it wants, and watches that. The other video is probably obviously still playing the audio, which is pissing it off. Yeah, yeah, it's not looking through the related videos for another period of video, it's going to fast forward. It skips ads. It's like, dog. They're smart. They, they, they are they, smart. They're learning. So, so then I looked it up, right? Uh, I believe they're the 11th smartest animal on the planet. Hmm. 11th. Now, my question to you is this. What are people saying right now? Oh, my God, the kids. Do you see how these kids are taking these tablets and they're one and two years old and they're navigating this tablet and they're doing stuff? They're interfacing with stuff that we've never seen them interface with because these things never existed for our um, generation. You know what I'm saying? Like for this time, you know, because I'm not I don't know what Egyptians had. and I don't know what other civilizations had that I feel like got way more advanced than we ever could imagine before they got taken out. Another story. But. Could the top 10 animals on a planet, if given access to the technology that we have, what could they do? What could they do? Well, all we're doing is scrolling through Twitter and getting on fights. Probably the same thing. No, we're 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 learning. Right. It's shrinking our world. Right. It's showing us what people our age are doing in Paris and it's showing us, you know, recipes to make that only people in Italy can make. And it's showing us, you know, what kind of pizza they got in Boston in this little bitty area that we never knew. But it's like it's shrinking the world. It makes us a lot smarter, a lot less physically effective, but it makes us a lot smarter. Like it. No. You, you don't think our technology just as a whole, just as as a whole, us uh, like animals are out here butt naked with nothing. Nothing. I think I think what the data shows is that we're actually getting dumber and we have been for the past 20 years. There's been a reversal in this thing called the Flynn effect. Wait a minute. That, how we're, are we're we getting, getting dumber? How, how are we getting dumber? But our kids are getting more capable. No. Uh, what are they capable of? They're capable of touching a button on the screen. They're not capable of. They're not even as uh, so then technologically why can't, okay. advanced as like millennials. Okay, yes. Okay, my so then why can't old people do it then? Why can't you put a tablet in, in your grandparents' hand and say, uh, this is what you gotta do, this is where you gotta go, but a one year old can do it. Right? If we're if we're if we're getting dumber, then how how come the last generation can't do what the babies can do of this generation? Did you read that latest article? Uh, it came out like last week. It, was, it basically said that boomers were less likely to get scammed online than Gen Z. Well, because it's less boomers online. Or I don't know if that's true. They're all on Facebook causing trouble. Yeah, but but like there's not a lot of um okay, look, when you get scammed, they're usually trying to send you links to stuff or stuff for you to click. There's not a lot of like they they kind of missed their window on like um relatable media. They're not really making media for boomers anymore. Boomers have to catch on to what 
the 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 millennials and the Gen Z, well not 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 so much Gen Z, but with the millennials or whatever was after the boomers, they're kind of having to latch on to what their um their programming is, right? And so you know, I can see that. Like my mom, only thing that my mom does is leave 450 tabs open on her phone and her internet, and then her phone just dies. Just like her phone, just like you charge everybody, like, I can't do it. Cause it just got every window she's ever had open, right? Like she's not getting, you know, uh, she has a harder time interfacing with the technology to just get basic things to work more so than experimenting like younger people would do. See, here, here's what I was talking about. This is the Flynn effect. And basically it says that IQs peaked for people who were born in 1977 and they've been going down ever since. Hmm. So it seems as though kids are getting smarter, but they're not actually able to use the technology because they don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Like they don't know HTML. They don't know a lot of coding. They just know to press a button and to scroll. Right. But they also know how to monetize things. See, all of this data meant something in 1977, right? Your, your IQ could literally mean that you could go to college and you were you were privy to a higher um, uh, salary. Like, you know, like your IQ netted out to you being more successful, right? You were intelligent. You were deemed a genius. You were, right? But now these kids are getting to the money way faster and using things. It's almost like these kids, this TikTok generation has found a way to hack the world. Like they're 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 hacking everything. They're hacking breakfast. They're hacking lunch. But it's like it's so smart that it's making quote unquote smart people feel so stupid. Like it's like I don't know if that's true. I know that it sounds right, but I just don't know if that's true. Like, does that add up that they actually have more wealth than previous generations? Yes, my, my, I don't think that's there true. There are there are more millionaires under twenty right now. Then I think the, the, this world has ever seen self-made, not not of of hand me down wealth. Like if the American goal and the dream is to be smart so that you can attain knowledge, so that you can obtain wealth and get things that other people can't reach, then there has to be a new form of this IQ rhetoric or, uh, you know, IQ scale that, you know, what I'm saying. I don't know. If- I don't know if that's true because the the online boom, basically Bill Gates generation, they made a lot of money just of when the internet came out. So they mm-hmm. had a lot of millionaires. I'm trying to find out but the age on. distribution of millionaires. But hold on. Those millionaires came from what? Tech, right? Yeah, the yeah, tech. And then millennials came from tech as well. Right, so but we have millennials the- were able to these are the these Gen Zs are the first ones that, that are using the tech to monetize everything else. Like NFTs didn't exist in the seventies. Like, like, like video NFTs games are now worthless. Okay, that's I have fine. to point that out. NFTs that's are fine. now worthless. That's fine, but they were worthless when they first came out. They just somehow made people think that they were worth a lot of money. That was the finesse. What else is worthless? Cereal is worthless, right? That, that's a billion <laughs> billion dollar industry. It's cornflakes. It's killing people, right? It's like these kids are doing exactly what these moguls were doing in the seventies. The same, you know, um, the Marlboro Man or you know General Mills. Now, you know that their their equivalent in today's society is like twenty years old. You know. And- so here's here's what I can find. And see, I what you're saying it makes sense, but just because something makes sense, you got to back it up. With, uh, absolutely, uh, the information. absolutely, absolutely. So it says fifty seven is the average millionaire age. I mean, that it just makes sense that the more time people have in the game, the more likely they are to make money. It says um, 19% of millionaires were 18 to 31. Mm-hmm. So in, most, most millionaires are 57 yeah. years old. They make their first million at 37. And then on average, look at number five, on average, the world's 100 health wealthiest people made their first million at 37. Yeah, that's not young. That's our age. Uh, that's that's millennial age. Right, but 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 it's it's not about the age, it's about the wide vast array of ways to get it now. Right? Yeah, I actually think that millennials had the the best of both worlds cuz we grew up before the internet and we mm-hmm. had to understand oh, this is how you get this is how you download a movie that's illegal to download, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
hey, this is how you do a lot of things. We had to use the tech, but now kids don't have to do anything hard anymore to get to the tech. It's just so, you know, but that's, press but, a button. Right, and I, I agree. But here's, here's also what I want you to realize. Don't think that as, as a society that we have not been simplifying our process in order to put our 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 knowledge in other places, right? So when we stop hunting and gathering, right, hunting all of all of our meat and going to the grocery store, right, men got smarter instead of more uh, barbaric, right? Men had to find different ways to contribute to the set because it's like, well, I'm not going out and killing food anymore. I can do a other another job. Out of that unnecessity to be a man became the computer engineers and different like. Um, technical and nerdier should i say jobs in society based on the fact that we didn't we no longer had to hunt for our food like when certain things become simple i think that the generation before that feels slighted that it wasn't that simple for them but you got to think we all got 24 hours in a day 365 366 in a year what happens is if i spend less time worrying about the same stuff that you had to worry about it gives me the opportunity to worry about a lot more shit, right? It gives Actually, me- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to challenge you on that okay. because the smartest of the smart now are way smarter than hunter-gatherers ever were. Absolutely. But on average, the hunter-gatherers had to go and they had to figure out where the animals were. You know, they had to track large portions of land. Like, they had to have a map of the area in their mind. Right, they so had to. So I would, I would contend that the average Average hunter gatherer was probably more with it, smarter, more capable than the average person today. Well, but the well, smartest of the smart today are to, probably I way smarter to, than the hunter gatherers. Uh, but I have to challenge that today. I mean, I have to challenge that to say that even your average intelligent person right now absolutely is smarter than your average hunter gatherer back then. And I'll tell you why. The one thing that I'll give the hunter gatherer from back then is the fact that they had a, there were no scientists, right? Because everybody had to be the scientist. Everybody had to understand exactly. what plants were what, what rocks were what, what water was what, what mushroom meant what, what dong belonged to what animal, so on and so forth. And so because those things were a necessity to know, right? It's like, well, you know, you had to know how to fix a VCR in 1987. You have to know how to get your tape unstuck, right? As that technology faded, the knowledge became obsolete. If you knew it, then you have a wider knowledge base. Like you said, the millennials have the best of both worlds, right? We were born in that time where we had to do a lot of hands-on shit, and then we get to enjoy life not being so hands-on. And we get jaded watching these young people go through life never having to be kind and please rewind. Or never having to, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you take your emotion out of it, like take us out of it and how soft these kids got it, you understand that it's like shit. Like when we got a fucking um an iPod, iPod shuffle, all, all your songs were in your hand. So you weren't mm-hmm. taking your CD out, putting it in the disc, making sure that you kept your CD clean so it didn't get scratched, and then put now that whole process like we beat it we beat that process right like the good thing about it is 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 if you live during that time if you ever come in contact with a cd you know what to do right so now you're kind of like double knowledge you have that knowledge plus the ipod knowledge but the ipod was smarter faster um more efficient play your song back real quick no rewinding you know what i'm saying like things as they get easier it's not our fault that we got so smart that we obsoleted things. Well, that's the thing, is that the top percentage got brilliant, absolutely brilliant, off the charts, you can't even compete. But everybody else, because it's so easy for them, they get dumber. Because even a CD, like the example you used, Mm -hmm. someone who uses a CD player has to know that it's that lens that's reading it. So keep that lens clean because that's part of the process. So they Mm -hmm. understand the process of reading the music a lot more. And then you go to your mother's generation and she knows about the needle, a record right, and, and that, that, and, that and the needle, needle reads yeah. the, um, the mm-hmm. little holes that are there. Mm-hmm. So this, this is a person who understands a lot more about their technology than someone who just presses a button. And uh, my mom and a lot of people from 1980 and before, they could take apart a car <laughs> and put it back together. Right. 
Right. That's true. And now cars are so complicated that you have to take it to the dealership. Not A regular person cannot take apart their car and put it back together. Right. I just think that, and ab- everything you're saying I agree with, I just think that it's like, as a human, I feel like there is some stuff that I just should not be worried about. Like, I, you know, I shouldn't know how to make my own shoes. I can do other stuff <laughs> besides learn how to make my own shoes. But learning how to make my own shoes will make me so much doper as a as a person who could be independent. And so I think that what we're saying, it kind of goes around and around with that. It's like, well, the bottom line is you're doper having more knowledge to do more stuff, right? And I think that, that that's what you're saying. It's like, well, you're automatically colder if you have more skill set, period. Like the more skill sets you have, that is that is like tangible evidence of your knowledge is your skill set, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But what I'm saying is that and we always have this debate, which is why I, I I was excited to talk to you about this because this goes back to the same thing about do I want the robots taking over the fast food restaurants? Like this is exactly the same thing. It's like, what well, do we do? We do we want to obsolete some jobs to make our life easier? To make me not have to worry about ever having a wrong burger or ever having someone with a poor um, morale making my food? Right? It's mm. like it's like, well, you know, did we? Did we make it this far to where we should not have to worry about certain things? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, certain things just should be obsolete. And I feel like, I, yeah, you know, like certain. No, you know, go on. The fact that we don't push for those things to become obsolete, and we do other stuff. It's like, okay, I didn't ask for movies to be off BCR. I would have. I wouldn't mind keeping movies on DVD or some shit like that if cars could fly. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if if everybody's car was flying and we weren't worrying about the, you know, the traffic or slipping on the snow of the ground, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like certain things I would love to see obsolete, but I appreciate the fact that we're moving in the, the direction of obsolete and shit because why not? Well, you know? I think you're curious and mm-hmm. I think you ask a lot of questions and you want to learn more. I just don't think everybody is that way, unfortunately. I think some people will see that things have gotten easier for them. And rather than saying, oh, hey, I spend less time figuring out how to listen to my music. I'm going to go learn something else. They're just going to waste their time on something else. Like they're just going to go on Instagram. They're just going to get in petty fights. You know, they're not going to take that opportunity to go to the next level, unfortunately. But I think that this kind of automation of our time benefits everybody and the people who catch on are going to skyrocket off of this, you know, AI can write you a paper, right? Like, what was the point of me writing the paper? Hold on. What was the point of me really, let, like, like, let's get to the root of why I had to write that paper because I have to proofread what the AI said. I have to make sure that I agree with it. Maybe I can tweak it, so to speak. But it's just that you, so that you feel like I have an understanding of the lesson. Yeah, right? exactly. Right. That's right. why you had to write the paper. So you're right. understanding the lesson. Exactly. But I have to, I have to take a chance that if I didn't proofread this AI enough and understanding enough and tweak it enough to turn it in and get an A, then that is going to forward my process of all right next time i do this i need to overcheck this ai like there's ways to tweak it right but writing a 40 page paper doesn't have to happen anymore it just doesn't but you have to should happen. i've you, i've written 40 page papers for some of my youtube videos mm-hmm. and the amount of research and what goes into that i can tell you probably 120 pages but i had to take it down to 40 that's the point of writing the paper. Like you understand a topic I understand from inside that. and from out. Like you can really explain that topic. But that's using, why you go to school. That's why you pay. But using AI as a writer's assistant. See what we're like. What we're saying is that I'm talking about writing the paper, not yeah, not being in charge of the 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 project of the paper. See, like you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a writer in Hollywood. You know that. And one of the biggest things people don't understand is that like. I can hire a writer's assistant and the writer, I can get an office, office space, or we can go to my office and I'll sit down and I'll be like, all right, cool. This is how the story begins. And the writer's assistant begins to formulate my script for me. Then I go home at night and I just play around in that world, move it around. The script is written by me. The writer's assistant gets paid. He doesn't write anything 
that he does that he's not told to write. He's just the hand to the keys, right? It's like AI as that is, I mean, that's where the world is going. Like we want to make our process so hard for the next generation. Like we want them to have it as hard as we had it. But the reason why we had it that hard is so that it wouldn't be hard anymore. That's like saying like, we, we built all of these cities and it's like, cool. But if you didn't help build one of these buildings, you can't come in one. It's like, no, the city is here. If you need more building, then let's build more buildings. But if we don't need more any more buildings, I'm using the buildings that's here. It's not like I don't need to build a building to prove that I, I can live in a building. You, well, you don't build a building where Roman's generation won't build a building. They'll be doing a space for us and they'll be building, you know, they'll be engineers and building things to take us to the stars. So they won't be, be building our buildings, but they'll use our information as a launching off point to the next thing that they're doing. But if they, they should know how to build these buildings because the buildings should be simpler than what they are doing. Right. Right. I mean, I just, I just, I guess I just don't have as much faith in people as you do. I just don't think that people are going to make the effort if they're not forced to. It's like, but you Maya, see that people, once they got into okay. office jobs, they stopped walking around and then everybody put on like 40, 50 pounds because they, they could, you know, people just want to do the easiest thing and but, the most comfortable thing, but, even if it's not good for them. But that's why you leave room for the outliers. Right. Because you say everybody, but not everybody. People have stand. No, you're right. Not Pe everybody. People there have, are people who people are have, curious and yeah. are, work but, hard. But people have stand up desk and people have the, the treadmill desk where they're at their desk and they're walking because they have a purpose. But they also want to, you know, still be fluidly moving. It's like some people are not going to survive the new way of things. And I think that we, it's, it's always been that way. It's always no, been and you're way. right. You're right. You're absolutely right. There's always going to be people who are, you know, they're going to take the time to work out before they go into work every day. You know, they're going to take the time to take care of themselves and eat healthier. I just think that from what we're seeing from the larger numbers in the United States, people, uh, they're eating more, they're working out less, and they're doing uh, more heroin. <laughs> oh, my God. So, look, I have faith in people. I don't have faith in everyone. It's not about everyone, right? Everybody's not going to be special. As a matter of fact, everybody can't be special because then special wouldn't even exist, right? I think that when we talk, we talk from the standpoint of being special. Like, I only want excellence. Like, I'm only talking from the standpoint of, like, people who could take this time that they're saving on bullshit and go do some new shit that could change the world over there. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are, people are playing Fortnite for millions of dollars because they don't have to go out and kill squirrels to eat. Absolutely. No, you're, you're right. You're kind of making an argument that, um, uh, they call it the, the Illuminati makes the globalists make the elites make that, you know, a lot of us are useless eaters. So screw them, oh. <laughs> but that's okay, man. That's the argument you want to make. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, I didn't mean to say it like that, but I mean, shit, low key. And then um, also, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it's just like um, we can't we can't carry everybody with us. You know what I'm saying? Okay, like, you didn't mean that. I know you didn't mean that. I know. I'm saying like I can't. Like, I'm not about to stop being successful because someone's homeless. Right? That's true. Right. I had to do what I had to do. My family invested in me. My parents, my mom took the time to to push me out of her body, then feed me every day. And it's like she deserves to see me do some dope ass shit that she can brag to her little old friends about it. Oh my God, you see what Chris did when he did the thing he did. She deserves that. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like Absolutely. Right. So no, somebody, we shouldn't. Like, right. we should raise our kids the best we can. Yeah. And somebody being homeless, I, I shouldn't drive past a homeless guy and be like, man, we're not all winning. Fuck. Uh, let me slow down and stop winning so much because we're not all winning. Right. And that's what I mean by that is everybody can't go. And so you speak the truth. You say what you and whoever listens is going to be able to sustain. And who doesn't? Maybe they'll listen to the person who you helped. Right. Like, so maybe you, you help somebody and then maybe they got a better way of saying it. And maybe they reach that homeless person. You got to do what you can, man. It's complicated. I'm not I don't I'm not going to say I have a solution to all the people who are falling behind, but it just mm -hmm. does seem that 
you know, more and more people are falling behind. And as we go further into the future, like Roman's generation, you're going to see the ones take off and then you're going to see the ones just, Mm. they can't keep up. Yeah. Hopefully the aliens come in and and they, you know, we didn't even talk about aliens, Maya. I haven't talked to you since. Oh, did you hear this story about the asteroid? Yeah, and they finally uh, studied an asteroid, but I didn't see what the results were. What did they say about it? Oh, no, this is the one that they think uh, there's a one in 2,700 chance that this asteroid is going to hit Earth by 2182. Mm. So they first saw it in 1999, and they said that it has the force, I believe, of 25 atom bombs. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> Amir scared as fuck. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna be 90. So old. I'm gonna nah, be 92. It, it, nah, 2182. Oh, 2182. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna be, be too here. dead. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. My kids gonna be dead too. So it's like, yeah, fuck my grandkids, man. They gonna have to figure out their own shit. I think my grandkids be dead too, low key. You talking about what? 2182. So that's a hundred. That's, that's a hundred and sixty years. Sixty years from now. No. Yeah, my grandkids is out of here. They, they might, be they, might to... they might be 80. They might be like ah, years. 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 I don't know. How how old are your kids now? Nine and twelve, right? Okay, so we give them like 15 years. 15 years before they have kids. Thank you, Amir. Yeah. Uh, 15 years before <laughs> they have kids. So you talk about 27 and and, 24, and, and 24. Okay. Right. So then they have kids banned. So now 15 years from now, that's uh we in 20 uh 20, 23, 38. 20, oh no. None of them going to be around. Yeah, they're not going to be here, yeah. bro. So 20, I, do, 21, I do not give a fuck. Anybody who I don't know in that bloodline after that is like, man, you're on your own, nigga. I ain't your ancestor no more. I'm only ancestor to my grandkids and their kids. That's why we, the world about to end now. Why? Because everybody give a fuck. Because give a fuck. They're like, we're not going to be around to see this Dog, shit. what could, because like, they don't give a shit that we can give a fuck about, Amir. It's our asteroid, oh, yeah, nigga. So right. Well, what the fuck are we going to do, though? I'm just saying in general. That's why the global warming shit is like, I'm not going to be here for that shit. I'm about to fucking die. That's why these politicians don't give a damn. They, they're perishing away, and they're going to be like, well, whatever. I mean, there's nothing we could do about a fucking asteroid. That's the truth. Right. Asteroid, we there's shouldn't nothing, give a fuck there's about. There's nothing we could do about it because if it hit, then A, it hit, and we did. Like, we can't. We could try Bro, to stop it, but global I mean, like, warming. You know what I thought about? Do we ever poke a hole in the ozone to air this bitch out a little bit and then seal it back up? Can that would we make it? it worse. Would it? Yes. Because yeah, the ozone layer, we need that. Because the sun, uh, uh, that, like boy, that should cook us. Cook us. It would be a slow cook. But what is the so then? Bad. What the fuck is the ozone layer? How is that not cooking us? The ozone Maya? layer is a protective layer over the earth. Yeah, it's a protective helps. layer. But of what though? Of it's like, like it's like a skin like. Like it's like we wear, sunglasses. We wear sunscreen. We wear sunscreen. We're supposed to wear sunscreen. You don't wear sunscreen. Well, what happens? You burn. You get cancer. You get all these other things. So right. You have to have a, our ozone layer has But why do I there. have to? I'm about to fuck you up then. Why right. do I got to wear sunscreen if I'm inside the fucking ozone? Because the ozone layer is breaking and it has been chipping away because it's well, getting so be, hot. The ozone layer can only do so much. The Basically, you still wear a sunscreen, but if we didn't have the ozone layer, we'd be completely exposed. And we have an atmosphere. It, it, our atmosphere really helps us out a lot. It breaks up a lot of asteroids too. It's that it's that strong. Mm-hmm. But it can't break away this one asteroid that's coming, huh? I mean, eventually, they, if it's too big. I think that the asteroid ain't coming in in no twenty eighty six. Because if they told us the day was coming, nobody would pay their bills. It, it got to hit us by surprise, so that everybody still pay their shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's really it's really just an estimate because there's no way to really calculate it. Well, they can see when it's going to come by Earth again. They just don't know exactly if it's going to hit us. They say one in uh, 2,700. I mean, maybe you could send up a missile and deflect it. I mean, that missile got to be strong as hell. Shout out to James Russell, TH Comedy, Antonio Rosa, Tiffany, uh, Dejanay, uh, Ty Gemini. What up, though? Oh, man, Ty. Man, she gave me this cold uh, picture of the dude. I mean, of the lady who was on that plane who was like, that motherfucker's not real. <laughs> she got to send me that, man. When I was in the Bay, she gave it to me. I was on stage, but I couldn't fly back with it. So I told her to mail it to me. So that's dope, man. That's dope. Oh, can we talk about this too? I'm on my tour right now and it's going crazy, right? And um, so like, I got this. I, this is some dope shit. I'm going to see something. How can I do this? Uh, Amir, can I send you a picture and then you put it on the, um... Yeah, uh, airdrop. 
shout out to everybody that's been coming to the shows too. Like uh, it's been really, really fun, man. A lot of people watch the podcast. We got to dare to do this podcast live on the road, Maya, because like, or, you know, even if I go on the road and zoom you in just so you, you can be with Roman, but still like people would love to have these conversations um, in person because- I'd love to take questions from the audience. That would be yeah, awesome. Like I'm telling you, like- You can ask questions, Patreon, you know, you can ask questions up here in the chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. They know that. They know that. They just be so engaged. I know. They just be talking <laughs> to each other and they be they be whatever whatever. I don't even know what Tiffany said. They got retracted. But they just be in here just being being mean to us. They be like, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you talk about. We be like, dang, guys, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but look, Amir, whenever you get that picture, bro, um, I want to show y'all. So this is like, this is what we got going on. So this tour I'm on is called um cp was here and it's kind of like a play on like you know all, all that alien stuff that i like and it's really cool like um but it's like a whole story that is uh okay so can you guys see it not yet not yet okay there you go. they can see it now okay so they can see it now mm -hmm. all right so it's called the cp was here tour and then amir i want you to zoom in on the moon that's next to the E in here on the right. Yep. Over here? Yep. So the next the next tour is called the, the Dark Side of the Moon Tour. It's happening in 2024. It's in January. And it's going to take place on this moon. And what I mean by that is like the merch is going to switch from a point of view of the character being on this moon. And then scroll down a little bit. The next one is going to be live from the cockpit. See that C on that spaceship right there? See that C hmm. to the to the right. Go to the right a little bit. I'm trying to trying to move, but I can't. Oh, but people can see it because it's next to Phoenix. If you look right, there's a C right there. It's gonna be live from the cockpit. Cockpit CP like, and so it's gonna look like a Starship Enterprise. The point is that every my next five tours is on this piece of merch right here, and I'm gonna stay in this universe until go go up to the W in in was all the way at the top. Until my last tour when I leave this universe and go to the next one. And that's like, that's what this whole artwork means. So like this tour, if you came to this tour and, and you got this shirt, this is the beginning. And then it's going to be a whole story told with like the merch and the comic books that I'm going to start selling at the place, at the at the venues or whatever. And it's all, you know, it's Back to the Moon tour. Uh, it's um the Speed of Light tour. All of these tours are going to be inside this universe over the next four years. And uh, yeah, I just, you know what I'm saying? So that's really, really dope. And I just That's wanna... really cool art. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon starts in January. Uh, I'm going, it's like it's like a wintertime tour. That's why I'm calling it the Dark Side. But it's going like to like, I think we're starting off in DC. Um, then I'm, I'm going to come down to Houston. I'm doing Atlanta. I'm doing Vegas. All the cities that thought we forgot about them are coming on the Dark Side of the Moon tour. And I'm really having a lot of fun with uh with just these details, working with these artists and like doing cool shit like that that I've always like, you know, I like like Kid Cudi and the Beatles and little shit like that. People who would take the time to make everything mean something. Like everything had to have like a you know what I'm saying? Like, and um, yeah, that's dope. That's dope. So uh anyway, aliens. You said there was one thing that you uh that you said about an alien, Maya, that uh other than the asteroid. I feel like there was something else. Oh, man. Okay, so more of these cigarette-shaped ship stories are coming out. And you know, that's what they said. That's, those are the black aliens. But they had one, a video where um, a UFO got shot at from Earth. And they showed it on a satellite. And it made me think, like, dog, are we fighting with the aliens right now? And no, And we don't know it? I hope not. If they had the technology to get over here, that's not a fight I don't want to pick. I mean, but we've we've just been told that we don't have the uh, the technology to get where they're at, right? But it's like we have to. Like we're finding out way too much stuff, and they just blame it on this Hubble Space Telescope, and it's bringing pictures back. Finally, it's like nah, like we're changing our whole perspective about what space, about what time means, about the universe and the multiverse. Like over the last fifteen years, I feel like we've broken through. We haven't told anybody. 
Like some- I haven't heard anything about us doing uh, propulsion. That's not jet propulsion yet. Like successfully doing really? um, something that would warp time and allow us to get to another galaxy or another star system within one of our lifetimes. So that's the thing. Um, it's not propulsion though, right? It's like this. It's like the. the like they have reverse engineered some things. Like I know for I don't know for a fact because I'm not there, so I don't want to say it like that. But their main goal has been to reverse engineer any kind of craft that they've come in contact with, if they could find the materials. And they've been working side by side with creatures and beings not necessarily of this dimension. Well, that's what Bob Lazar said. Bob Lazar said that he was working to reverse engineer this craft that had actually been found on Earth that had come from thousands of years ago. So that's what he was saying is they were trying to reverse engineer it. But I don't know if they'd been successful. Mm. Uh, I know he said that they tried to do one. And this this is a guy. Bob Lazar is kind of a whistleblower. And some people say that he's on bullshit. Some people say that he's for real just to let everybody know, get them caught up with who he is. And he said that these two scientists went out into the desert to work on this craft and it just exploded and it killed everybody on site. And um, they said it was a a nuclear bomb testing, but really that's what it it really was. And a lot of scientists died. So I I haven't heard that they've been successfully able to reverse engineer, but Bob Lazar does say that they are trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I can only imagine like what, a battery cell or some kind of fuel cell from one of those things uh, could be capable of, if it could get something that big or all, you know, out the way that fast, like fucking with it wrong could really, really explode some shit for sure. So that's, you know, that's that. Um, the energy involved. Yeah. And like, it's such a small amount of space. I, yeah. I, I couldn't imagine, but he said that they were on earth thousands of years ago. So I agree with that too. I agree with that, too. I think that a lot of this, um, we just keep having to start over. They've seen this technology before. You know, we've 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 had different civilizations do a lot of miraculous things. You know, they found that pacemaker in ancient Egypt that was made out of a dark matter that was still beating in in a in a mummy. Look that up. They found an ancient pacemaker that the power source was some kind of dark matter. And it was still functional when they opened up the tomb. Like, I don't even know if people understand. Like, that's just a pacemaker. Imagine that kind of fuel cell in a cell phone that never went dead or in an electric car that never had to get charged up or in, you know, uh, um, power in a house that never needed any other power source other than that. Like, there's... Okay. I'm so this is the this is what you're talking about. Yeah. This pacemaker. I don't I have to double check this oh, yeah, to see if it's if it's go for ahead. real, but um I can link I can link this for people yeah. too. They're trying, I mean it's like, you know, the fact of the matter is look up while you're looking that up, look up when the pacemaker was uh invented, quote unquote. Because I guarantee fucking to you that it ain't say Egypt. No, the pacemaker, if this is true, that would totally rewrite the timeline. I just have to. um... Oh, yeah, for sure. Do your research. But, you know, I've watched it. And I mean, that's about as much research as I can do based on what they're showing me, because if they're showing me that and it's fake, then what they're why would they fake something that debunks everything that they've been telling us? It's like well, people lie on the Internet all the time. I would say that even the the last thing we touched on the what was it? The the. Person from space or whatever. Like or people just person. remember the. Uh... Oh, so Leah. So let's get that out the way. Everybody was mad at me because the Mona Lisa from space. Apparently, that was from a movie. The point I'm trying to make is that a lot of these things. Granted, we knew that was. I mean, it was. It was looking crazy. I knew that. Amir pointed it out. It's like nigga, that shit looks like wax. I'm like, listen, I get that. <laughs> but Who does it benefit for us to deem these things ridiculous? It does not benefit us at no. all. As a matter of fact, it's like what they're teaching us is to not have any questions. Meanwhile, the questions is that's like that's everything that we know. Like 
was there an Apollo 20 thing that went to the dark side of the moon because they saw a a, a crash landed ship on um, a satellite and they went to go investigate it and found out it was thousands of years old? Did that happen? Because it very well could have. It very well could have. It's like the fact of the matter is, I tell like people this all the time, like lie to your girl one time and let her find out and see if she believe any fucking thing you ever say. Right. I mean, well, that that's what they say. They have a uh, controlled opposition that there are people out there purposely lying to us so that we never believe when the truth comes out. And they right. say that the CIA does this. They have people that go out, especially when it comes to aliens. They purposely go and they plant these stories. Like if you ask Tony, he's all over a lot of people on Twitter that he's like, this person's controlled opposition. This person's controlled opposition. They're trying to muddy the water. So we never mm-hmm. believe when a real thing comes out. But why, though? Like, why does this water need to be muddied? Like, you know, I was just in, uh, where the fuck was I at? I was in uh, Tacoma, Washington. Shout out to Nate Jackson. I was at Nate's club. And uh, I was coming through the airport, and then I realized all the souvenirs. I'm in Bigfoot country. I, I, never, I didn't even realize that that's Bigfoot area, right? And it's like, what the hell is, like, What is going on for real? It's a lot of shit going on that they like to deem as a joke. They're selling little Bigfoots in the airport. It's like, you know, do you understand that they had that lady who got on a plane and said that motherfucker back there is not real? Do you know how many plane flip outs that I've seen on Instagram, Maya? I see them all the time. I saw them dragging this black lady down the aisle. She was looking like Martin when he went crazy in that uh, courtroom when he was trying to be his own lawyer. Like She was wilding out. Did they have her apologize, though? She said all kind of shit. She was biting people. Did they have her apologize? No. Did they have, like, the the girl who they brought out for the for the thing? That wasn't even her. It looked like she had on the same outfit. She, it, it looked like they made up somebody's face to be an expression that she was making just to issue a statement that says, my bad. Why? Nobody made her make a statement. What do you mean nobody made her make that? What nobody, do you think? Nobody why made would her you think, made a statement. Why a statement? would you think that nobody made her do that? She, They were looking for her because it was like, well, we want you to explain like what's going on. But that's just journalism. They, people want it because it was like, oh, she did this and then she disappeared. We can't get in contact with her. Listen, you go viral on the internet, they interview you. That's they, what they do. I, I mean... It just depends on what, it, what it's about. They, they'll they go and interview. She blew up on the internet. That video was everywhere. And so telling somebody they're not real, like, are but, you good? Like, we so, want to know some so, context. So for her to not give the context. Did did you see the interview? Mm-hmm. The interview was like I don't I can't say exactly, you know, I I don't know. I was tripping. I am it's like it looked knowing our government, knowing how they move, knowing how they try to finagle the people, it looked like damage control more so than her trying to come out and get some fans. She wasn't doing uh that motherfucker's not real uh club appearances. She wasn't like she was that famous where she, she could have went on some Neil deGrasse type shit. She could have she could have did a lot of shit. She could have went on Joe Rogan podcast. Like it was a Barbara Walters lit little room with her fully made up. Didn't even look as young as she really looked in the video saying, "Sorry everybody, I was tripping." All those plain videos, the reason I see them is because they're videos. I'm not seeing them in person. They're all going viral. All a lot of, them. of people use drugs before they get on planes, though, too. You got to keep that in mind. The amount of people who take a Xanax and a drink before they get on a plane. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've seen Bryce Mays. Now, yeah. here's one thing I do want to say is just because I don't know about that pacemaker yet, I have to do more research. It doesn't mean that they didn't have technology back in the day. I mean, have you seen this thing? Well, it's not about, what is that? That They found this in a vessel and it's a 2000 year old like analog computer that's um, the world's oldest computer and they didn't know what it was. Uh, they found it about 115 years ago and it's a Greek computer. It's for telling uh, astronomy, the this, this stars, uh, charts yeah, and yeah, so forth. Yeah, 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 I have heard about that. I mean, of course. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it just seems like, like, go up. Is that a disc? Is that like an ancient floppy disc right here? This is this is what the thing would look like. Oh. So yeah, it had, it's like a, it's like watchmaking. Yeah, yeah, and so, so they were more advanced. But 
more advanced is one thing more advanced than we thought or more advanced than us because i think they're more advanced than us the thing about that pacemaker when you do the research is that it was still functional it's not that they had the technology that's that's like that fucks me up too but what what, what really fucks me up is the, the sustainability of the technology and the power source and it's like what are we not tapping into and where the fuck are they getting dark matter from in ancient I don't Egypt. know. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to check out yeah. this pacemaker more because are you talking dark matter in that. I'm just going to have to look into it. More. Hey, That's all. Maybe okay. it's real. Maybe it's not. OK, so I, I know that we're going over, but I'm just excited, man, because you're back and I want to talk to you about some other stuff, too. So we talked about the terracotta army when you were here. Mm -hmm. Remember that? The army of those statues that, quote unquote, took 700 people, 100 years to make or something like that. That was way more people than that. Seven. It, was, it was way more. It was way more. Oh, 700,000 people or something like that. It was over a, a, a span of hundreds of years, though. Yeah. And they just so happened to find it, stumbled upon it. And then that was the story being told behind it. Right. But then you hear the story about the aliens that turned those dudes into stone in the Russian army and how it turns soldiers into pillars of limestone. And in the Bible too. Pillars of salt. Yeah, exactly. It's in the Bible as well. But this but this is not the Bible. This is a CIA document. I'm sorry, an FBI document about what the KGB um described as a flying saucer with five beings coming down, turning 23 soldiers into pillars of limestone. Which made you think, what if these are like, what if this ain't what we think it is? Now, I'm going to say that. So how so how would that work? Because the, see here is not we don't have the internal things. Now, if they just if they just like put a layer of clay on these people and disintegrated them from the inside, then that would make sense. But I don't see any internal bone structure here. Right. And I mean, we don't know what kind of heat went into making them that. And if there was a lot of heat and it cooked them inside of these, I can imagine uh, bones and stuff just kind of falling down inside of this. Like I've seen um, old Buddha statues with actual people inside the statues and people never even knew. Like, like they. Oh, sold, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, you know that's really cool. Yeah, that's fucking terrifying. Cause like they don't even know, and they're like selling them on like flea markets for like eighty bucks. You gotta be, you buy it, and somebody's granddaddy is inside of that bitch. <laughs> I mean, maybe. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Like there are certain things that you write. It's in the Bible, and they were describing what they were describing. Meanwhile certain things are still happening on earth and we're trying to act like the same people who believe in the Bible is also acting like they can't believe in this shit, which is crazy. Yeah, if you believe in the Bible, then you should be able to believe in this easily. And for all we, like, we have, uh, we have these ancient books that say a lot of things. For all we know, they visited 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. They got in a fight with humans and they didn't come back. Like, we go to a lot of neighborhoods and we don't go back. We just travel through and we keep going. Yeah. I guess. I guess. The beauty of this is, of course, is that we always have the questions and never the answers. Uh, yeah, this is another episode of the CP Podcast. Um, we got Maya back in the house, man. It's so dope, man. I like your space too. It looks like uh like Mr. Rogers, like green room. Like after he <laughs> like after they film, he go back there and be like, it's all my books back here and a little bit of cocaine. <laughs> but no, like uh happy to have you back, man. You need to, if you can, join us with more zooms whenever you're available. Um, tell Tony he could join us as well, man. Uh that's Maya, Maya the mom. Uh, and Amir, who is not wearing black, but I'm wearing black. And so uh, I don't know what he's done to me. I don't know what's going on. This nigga's an alien. Uh, we're out of here, man. Uh, CP Podcast. Peace. <laughs>